Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a 30 year female with painless swelling of the upper abdomen, gradually increasing in size over one year. Ultrasonography shows a cystic lesion with internal echoes and septation, anterior to the right kidney and inferior to the right lobe of the liver. These two organs, the right kidney and the uh, liver, could be excluded as organs of origin for the cystic lesion. But ultrasonography could not determine the exact organ of origin. This frequently happens with large lesions. Sometimes the lesion is larger than its organ of origin itself and completely replaces it. In this case, relying on anatomical relations of the lesion is important. On ultrasonography, the septations show some echogenic spots, which suggests calcification. CT has been performed to determine the organ of origin and, if possible, the nature of the lesion. And from the first look, it is not easy to do that. So we have to analyze very carefully the anatomical relations and displacement of certain anatomical landmarks to know the exact organ of origin. So we'll take it from the top. The lesion starts immediately under the liver and gallbladder, both organs excluded as organs of origin. This places the stomach anteriorly. The blue arrow shows the inferior vena cava as it is compressed entirely by the lesion. So it is a direct posterior relation to the lesion. And the yellow arrow shows the atrophic tail of the pancreas. Here we see a very important anatomical landmark. This is the second part of the duodenum identified by its content of contrast agent and a small gas bubble pointed to by the yellow arrow. This is the rest of the pancreatic body with dilatation of the pancreatic duct. Still we see the duodenum. And here is the confluence of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein to form the portal vein, displaced to the left by the lesion, pointed to by the red arrow. The yellow arrow shows the pancreatic body as it comes in direct relation to the left side of the lesion. This is the right renal artery forming a direct posterior relation to the lesion. And here between the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery pointed to by the red arrows, we see the left renal vein compressed between the two and as it goes further, compressed entirely by the lesion in its way to join the inferior vena cava. Still we see the duodenum immediately inferior to the renal veins on both sides we see large veins going vertically these are the ovarian veins here we see the calcifications within the septation inside the lesion And we see downward displacement of the transverse colon. And still, we can trace the ovarian veins down. Until they join the ovaries. The ovaries are pointed to by the yellow arrows. Then we see the uterus showing heavy 
collateral veins passing through the myometrium anteriorly and posteriorly. This is a maximum intensity projection of the contrast enhanced CT after removal of the bone. And here we see two very important anatomical landmarks. The yellow star is the second part of the duodenum, markedly displaced to the right, touching the right side of the abdominal wall. And the blue star points to the confluence of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein to form the portal vein. So a structure that displaces these two anatomical landmarks this way should be at the pancreatic head. The right renal artery is seen and it should have been accompanied by the left renal vein as it crosses to reach the inferior vena cava here, but it is not seen because it is compressed by the mass lesion. This is a three-dimensional representation of the lesion. And here we will see some of its anatomical relations in 3D. This is the widening of the C shape of the duodenum, a classical sign in the old days of barium meal to diagnose pancreatic head lesions. We see here the downward displacement of the transverse colon by the lesion. This is the portal vein formed by the confluence of the splenic and superior mesenteric vein displaced to the left a typical displacement pattern of the pancreatic head lesions. And superior to the confluence pointed to by the star, you see narrowing of the portal vein because of the compression, not because of the encasement or infiltration, as the features of the lesion are more towards benign rather than malignant neoplasm. There are no solid components and the dissipations are thin and calcified. And here we see the right renal artery should have been accompanied by the left renal vein, but it has been compressed by the lesion. So the question is how the left kidney is drained. And the answer is it is drained by retrograde flow of blood from the left renal vein via the left ovarian vein and from there through the rich collateral network of veins inside the uterus to the right ovarian vein and from there to the inferior vena cava. So the diagnosis here has been mucinous neoplasm of the pancreatic head proved by histopathology after a Whipple's procedure. And the learning points are determination of the organ of origin of large lesions may be difficult. For this purpose, the typical anatomical relations would be helpful. In this particular case, the typical anatomical relations of the pancreatic head 
in addition, of course, to the absence of the pancreatic head itself being replaced by the lesion and the atrophic changes and the dilatation of the pancreatic duct at the pancreatic body and the tail. The pancreas is located in a vital location, very complex anatomical relations, but the most important of them as far as displacement of the organs is concerned in imaging are medially splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein confluence to form the portal vein, laterally the second part of the duodenum, posteriorly the right renal artery, the left renal vein, and the inferior vena cava. Inferiorly, the transverse mesocolon and the third part of the duodenum, and superiorly, the undersurface of the liver. The left renal vein compression is compensated for in the female by a loop formed by the two ovarian veins and the uterus to drain in the inferior vena cava. The male is denied this privilege because the scrotal septum prevents the communication between the two gonadal veins.